Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Our first story about the world's most patient person ever, but in the end, he got justice. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Just needed the right incentive. A number of years ago, I had a billing issue with a local department store that managed their own in-house credit department. They double billed me for a purchase. The bill even showed the same purchase date and transaction number on both lines. For simplicity's sake, we'll say the purchase was $50 and they billed me $100. Of course, I paid only $50 and telephoned them to explain what had happened. They promised to fix it. Next month, they sent another bill for the unpaid balance of $50 plus interest so another phone call ensued, they promised to fix it. Next month, they sent another bill with a $50 credit, but still showed the unpaid interest charges. Two months worth this time, so another phone call ensued, they promised to fix it. Next month, they sent another bill with the finance charges removed, but the $50 added back. So another phone call ensued, they promised to fix it. Next month, they sent another bill with the $50 credited twice, so now my statement shows them owing me $50. Now, finally, I took the statement into the credit office at the nearest store location and requested that the sum be refunded to me in cash. They readily agreed and I left with $50 cash in my pocket, which I then deposited in my checking account. Next month, they sent me a bill for $50 and I wrote them a check for $50. End of problem. And our second story. Your son kissed my daughter, and she is the spawn of Satan. Okay, Satan goes to church. My daughter was in daycare, and one day she was crying hysterically, but wouldn't tell me why until I got her outside. I forgot to mention that I saw a car speed off as I pulled up, which was strange. This is important. Anyway, I'm cuddling her and trying to calm her down to find out what was going on. After about 15 minutes, she told me she was possessed by a demon. Now, I'm not a very religious person. I tell her to tell me why she thought about that herself, and she just started crying all over again. I decided to go back in and flat out demand an answer to what happened. I wanted the truth or I was gonna go off. The daycare worker, let's call her Sandy, told me that she was playing with the girls and that the girls all jumped up on her because they caught the flower stomper. Okay, that sounded like a game, so why the tears, Sandy? Sandy looked down and told me that a little boy ran up and kissed my little one on the cheek. Okay, no big deal, I didn't like it, but why is she crying so hard? Sandy then tells me at the exact second that he kissed her cheek, his mother opened the door. Sandy told me how she grabbed his arm, turned to my daughter and screamed, You are going to burn in hell, you demon-possessed brat! My daughter said, What? The woman screamed some more, You and your family are going to burn in hell, spawn of Satan! I was stunned into several minutes of silence. I asked Sandy how long it had been since the woman left, and she told me that she left just before I got there. In comes Mommy Satan. I carry my little one to the car and get her all buckled up and kissed her forehead, and I asked her if she wanted to see what Mommy Satan, I pose like a superhero, can do. She gave me a weak smile and nodded yes. So I proceeded to drive by several church parking lots looking for the car I saw take off. It was a Wednesday. I was about to give up, but then, bingo, I actually found it. I unbuckled my girl, tickled her, and pointed out the car. I said, do you know whose car that is? She didn't, but when I leaned to the window, she saw the art project they'd done that day. She grabbed me tight and said, the mean woman, kind of in a little panic. I told her not to be afraid. I was with her and to do exactly what I said. I put her on my hip and walked my happy butt straight to the place they gathered for services, I slammed open the doors. Church went silent. I walked, back straight, head held high, 100%, I'm here, bees, to where the man was standing and made my little, very loud announcement. Pardon the interruption, folks, but you see, the spawn of Satan has been picked up by her mother. I don't know your face, so my little devil is going to be pointing out the person that I'll be visiting in the parking lot. Point her out, child of mine which my baby did with a huge smile on her face. That's her mommy. And as I exited the room, I stopped at the woman's row and said, hello, missus. 
I am Satan, and I've brought hell with me, you'll see outside. Now I went out and sat on the hood of my car, which was parked directly behind her car. I waited about an hour. Then there was a skinny fellow who walked out of the building and up to me, he said, Miss, this is the house of God, please don't make problems on this holy ground. I went off and told him everything that had happened, and that I wouldn't be leaving without a formal apology in writing to my child, and if I didn't get the apology, I was going to press charges on her for child abuse through emotional abuse of minor. And I would win, too. Yeah, that's a law in this state, an old one, but still just as enforced as any other. I had no clue who this guy was, didn't care either. He says that he's sorry for his wife's behavior and asked if I wouldn't press charges. He leaned down to my little one and gave her a very sincere apology. I told him he wasn't responsible for his wife's behavior and I wanted an apology given by her to my daughter. He gave a sigh and said I'd have a formal apology at the daycare the next day in front of everyone. Wow, I was surprised by this and accepted his offer. The next day I was waiting, waiting, then he shows up to pick up his son. Oh, I was PO'd. He asked everyone to listen to him for a minute and he apologized for his wife's behavior. She would no longer be picking up or dropping off the little boy. He shook his head yes to his son who promptly grabbed a little toy for my daughter and gave it to her along with a sweet kiss on the cheek. The father asked if I would accept this as the apology and please don't press charges against his wife. I told him I wouldn't be pressing charges. He handed me an envelope, then he left with his son after thanking me. We were super curious about the envelope, so we all gathered around to read it. It was on his letterhead. He was a lawyer. The contents of the letter read, Dear Mommy Satan, I wish I had a mother as protective of me as you are. And he signed it. Mommy Satan got her baby girl the most sincere apology that child ever heard from a stranger. And our last story. Noisy neighbor gets silenced. Back in the 80s, I lived in a flat in southeast London. The flat was located in a small tower block 10 stories high with four flats per floor, one per corner as it were. The flat overlooked a local park and afforded very nice views of the area. The neighbors were generally very amenable, but everybody tended to keep to themselves, so no one had any problems with anyone. That all changed when a new family moved into a flat down on the second floor on the same corner of the building where we lived. We lived on the 8th. They were not the most gracious of individuals, frequently leaving rubbish bags strewn about their floor's lobby for days rather than depositing them in the communal bins and parking their cars in other residents' allocated parking spots. In other words, the epitome of the Appalachian shaft. Complaints to the local council invariably fell on deaf ears. They soon developed a reputation for hosting loud, drunken parties on the weekends, which tended to go past midnight. This was pretty fecking annoying for us and the other residents, but we were somewhat less affected due to the distance between our respective flats. One particular Friday evening, however, proved to be the straw that broke the camel's back. At around 10 p.m., we heard the music start up, but it now appeared that the hosts had recently purchased a new sound system because the bass was now intolerably loud. I can only surmise that a peculiarity of the building's design coupled with what sounded like much larger bass speakers, appeared to magnify the effect in our bedroom to the point where it made it quite impossible to sleep. At about 11.30 p.m., I trotted downstairs and knocked on their door. It was flung open by what I could only assume to have been the male resident, looking somewhat the worse for wear. I politely asked him if he'd mind turning the music down as it was very loud, rattling the furniture in my flat and making it difficult to sleep. F off! And he slams the door. Charming, I thought. So I go back upstairs and call the non-emergency police number and explain the situation. They assured me that someone would be around in due course. Being a Friday night, I reckoned it might take an hour or two, so with much wailing and gnashing of teeth, we sat there waiting for the cops to rock up. Sure enough, about an hour later, I saw a patrol car pull up and a couple of London's finest enter our building. A few moments later, the music gets turned down and the police leave. No sooner had the car disappeared up the street than the music went back up to its previous level. We endured it for another half hour, no change. So once again, I call the cops. This time it takes closer to two hours for them to turn up. Yep, definitely a busy Friday night. They arrive around 3 a.m. and once again, the music is reduced to a sensible level. 
Unfortunately, shortly after they depart, back up goes the volume to its previous furniture shaking intensity. As you might imagine, by now I was royally PO'd, or indoors too. Someone not normally prone to displays of anger was positively foaming at the mouth and looked like she was single-handedly going to reenact the Battle of Austerlitz in glorious Technicolor, together with a full orchestral accompaniment. It was then that I had a dazzling idea, one so fiendishly cunning and yet devilishly simple, a guaranteed cast iron 100% pure 24 karat stonker of an idea so brilliant that I felt certain that within minutes I could stop this once and for all and execute my plan in such a way as to make it impossible to trace back to me. Cue maniacal cackling whilst twirling imaginary mustache. Grabbing my toolkit, I crept down the stairwell to the second floor, just to double check the actual flat number. Having confirmed the number, I went back up to the fourth floor. In the stairwell, just next to the exit door to the fourth floor lobby was a wooden access door that concealed one of the two electrical distribution panels for the entire building. The door was only secured by a dent of a simple square-fitting key, and the application of a large flat-blade screwdriver would pop the latch no problem. Thus, I opened the door to reveal the distro itself. Pulling the cover open, I was presented with a large panel containing 20 large 80-amp fuses, one for each of the lower set of flats. Each one was neatly labeled with the flat's number, and twas but a moment to locate the appropriate one. Now, by one of those happy coincidences that usually only occur in the more egregious examples of the Hollywood B-movie, I just happened to have in my toolkit a dead fuse of exactly the same type and capacity. A few weeks previously, I'd had to replace a similar fuse in the theater where I worked, and I'd absentmindedly tossed the dead fuse in my toolbox where I'd promptly forgotten about it. Until now. Now, with all my ducks in a neat row, I pulled the fuse carrier for the miscreants flat out. Instant, blessed silence. I rapidly swapped a live fuse for the dead one and reinserted the carrier, securing everything back up again. I casually strolled back upstairs to enjoy a few hours in the hallowed arms of Morpheus. Addendum. Some weeks later, the troublesome family were moved out of their flat. It transpired that the local council had received so many noise complaints over the previous six months, they were obliged to rehouse them elsewhere. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.